What is going on, Notre Dame football fans? You might see some snow flurries falling in front of our faces here. It's cold in South Bend, but the Notre Dame football team practiced for the sixth time this spring, primarily in the Iris Athletic Center in the warmth of the IAC. But there were some drills outside. The, the big offensive linemen went outside. Defensive linemen went outside. We stayed inside. Jack, I'm just going to throw it to you. What did you see? You were watching the offense today. What did you see from those guys in the IAC? Yeah, a couple quick updates. Uh, Jeremiah Love is cross-training at wide receiver. We talked to him and Dylan McCullough, the running backs coach, after practice. Lo Love, he's, he's, not, he's not switching positions. We saw him at running back two. Uh, but he wants to cross-train there uh, just to get a sense of like if, if he can get, get in some personnel packages, some creative stuff at wide receiver in Mike Denbrock's offense, or if you know a disaster scenario uh, takes place like the Duke game last year where Notre Dame doesn't have a lot of receivers, they can kind of move him there in a pinch. We talked to Dylan McCullough about it. He said that one of the reasons they're comfortable kind of giving him to, to the receivers and, and allowing him to do that is because he's just so so adept at running back at this point. Like the, they're comfortable. I, kind of in spring camp doing a little bit of this experimentation. So it might be something you see heading into the season. It's not, it's not a full-on position change again, but I did think it was notable. The other thing, uh, personnel-wise, Riley Leonard in a boot, looked pretty cheerful, kind of greeting everyone, rolling around on, on a scooter. Steve Angeli was sick today, so Kenny Minchie and CJ Carr operated the offense. Kenny Minchie was with the first teamers. Uh, we saw a little bit of 11 on 11. Minchie looked good. Carr looked Oh, Carl looked pretty good. I uh, nothing spectacular, either good or bad, but just something that was notable today. Yeah, and I'll go back to Jeremiah Love for a minute. We were talking to him for a couple minutes there, and I thought it was interesting that I asked him the difference between himself and Janarian Price, and he said he's faster. That was the you know he stalled for a minute. He said, "Well, I'm faster," and then he said he actually has a desire to play wide receiver that Jadarian doesn't. So I think that's part of it. Um, maybe he went to the coaching staff and said, hey, let, let me try out my, my feet here and, and see what I can do as a wide receiver. And that, was an, that brings me to the next thing. You said that he's grading out so well at running back that Notre Dame can afford to say, hey, go take some reps over there because we know when you come back, you're going to be the same guy. Dylan McCullough has this thing called a, a running back certificate, basically, and it's not an actual piece of paper or anything like that. It's, it's, it's more of just a, a stamp of approval. I asked him after his interview, like, who has that on this team? He said Jabron Payne because – and you don't think of Jabron Payne as, as this guy that gets all these carries and all that stuff, but you do see him on third down, and you do see him in pass pro, and that rounds out a complete back. He told me that Jeremiah Love also has that. Yeah. Jadarian Price is actually working for it because if you go back to last season, you don't see a lot of Jadarian Price on third downs. That's the next step for, for JD. So if he can get there, I think maybe you do see Jeremiah Love a little bit more uh, at wide receiver just because Mike Denbrock likes making plays with playmakers, and Jeremiah Love is one of those. Talk about the defense a little bit. This was the first practice that we saw without Benjamin Morrison, who had shoulder surgery earlier this week. Obviously, he's going to be out for the, the rest of spring ball. So the, the big question coming in today for me was, who's starting at corner? It was Jaden Mickey, and it was Clarence Lewis. I think a lot of us have spent time talking about how good Mickey is, how good Christian Gray is. But Clarence Lewis has the most experience at corner of, of anyone on this team, so I wasn't surprised to see him step up in that starting role. Kristen Gray and Chance Tucker, the senior, uh, were the two backups there. The rest of the secondary was, was as you expect, Xavier Watts starting at safety, Adon Schuler starting at safety without Rod Hurd here on campus, uh, the Northwestern transfer. So not a whole lot else for me from the defense, but uh, you mentioned to me just before we started this that Clarence Lewis did make a, a really good PBU on Micah Gilbert, who by all accounts has been a really good wide receiver for Notre Dame uh, this spring. Speaking of the wide receivers, what did you see from those guys today? Yeah, I was kind of I kind of zeroed in on Gilbert and Cam Williams, the freshman, uh, and kind of saw a little bit more of what we've been seeing so far in, in that Gilbert, you know, is is farther along at this point in his career. Cam Williams, I, he's really lanky, and I don't get the sense that his change of direction is all the way there yet. He's, he's obviously got that size size and speed combination, but as we know, I mean, there's so much to playing wide receiver. Obviously, it's early. Marcus Rune will be the first to say that every journey is different, especially for these young guys. Like, if, if Cam Williams isn't necessarily ready to play right now, that, that doesn't necessarily mean Mikey Gilbert's going to have the better college career. Doesn't doesn't mean anything about Cam Williams right now other, other than Micah Gilbert is a little farther along at this stage. Gilbert, on the other hand, he looks really smooth with, with his cuts. 
Uh, he he just he doesn't look like like a freshman. He he looks like he's got a really good understanding of route running. He's a physical guy. He'll make catches through contact. He's someone that I think you could you could see this fall. Uh, whereas again, it's very very early. But Cam Williams might be a guy where you, where you could see him uh, like in sub packages. I think Notre Dame would be a little foolish not to at least explore utilizing his speed. Uh, just on on some quick screens or or, or something along those lines, uh, but not not quite as advanced at this stage. Yeah, the way I see it, my early impressions of those two guys, they both looked apart. Like if you didn't see them run any routes and they were just standing there about to run routes, you say, okay, yeah, that that guy's a college wide receiver. And if you had no idea who they were, you wouldn't even know that they were freshmen. Where the difference comes is exactly what you were just saying. When they do run routes and they are matched up against defensive backs, Micah Gilbert just carries himself a little better, uh, more like a pro, more like someone who has done this before even though he hasn't, which, yeah. which leads you to believe, holy cow, when he actually does get out there, he's going to be really good. And I think Cam Williams is going to be the same way. Uh, but like you said, Marcus Freeman just – he knows that all of these different guys are on different trajectories, different paths. And – you just hope that they stick it out because the last thing that you want is like a Tobias Merriweather situation or, or even a Braylon James situation yep. where you want to develop those guys. The transfer portal comes calling, though, and all of a sudden you don't have that chance anymore. So I, I see it the same way as with those two guys. Just getting back to the defense, and then I'll, I'll throw it to you for any last tidbits on the offense. Uh, it, it, the, those guys are lining up exactly how you would think uh, on the defensive end of the ball. I said on March 7th on the first practice that Notre Dame had this spring, the defensive line is pretty much set. You know who's in the middle with Howard Cross and Riley Mills, R.J. Oben and Jordan Botello playing the, the two different defensive end positions. I've been kind of looking at the DN spots. I've been looking at who comes out there next. And today it was Bubakar Traore and uh, Josh Burnham is playing that strong side more and more. So uh, Traore playing the, the Viper position, which he just projects so well at that position. And then I think they're really trying to beef up Burnham because he had that uh, stint where he, he was a little bit of a tweener and they didn't know who he was going to be. Obviously, um, kind of playing behind Jordan Botello last year, I, I think they're going to kind of move him to that strong side, and, and that's where he fits. One last thing on the defense from me, the linebackers. More and more it feels like it's Jack Kaiser and Drake Bowen and, and Jalen Sneed's probably a little step behind or I know he, he projects mostly as a rover but Notre Dame doesn't use the rover a whole lot anymore because college football has gone so nickel heavy so uh, he was out there in one of those 11 on 11 reps that we saw. I, I think they threw a rover out there but for the most part when, when those ones were out there it's Bowen and it's Kaiser manning the middle of that defense and uh, it, it, more and more it feels like that's the way it's going to line up in, yeah. on August 31st uh, in College Station, which is awesome for Drake Bowen, who was primarily a special teamer last year, but I think he's actually taken that next step, and you're going to see him as an every-down defensive dude. Last thoughts on the offense? Yeah, not, not a whole lot. We didn't see a, a ton really at all from the offensive line today. Uh, just another quick note on the running backs. I, I talked to Aeneas Williams after practice. I think it was the first time he's been available to the media since uh, he's come to Notre Dame. Really impressive dude. He talked a lot about just kind of getting the little things down, like what he brings to the table. It's that pass catching, that, that pass blocking uh, that he, he thinks he can kind of help help right away there. He, he looks really natural as a pass catcher. I was watching him a little bit during routes on air. Made a nice back shoulder play in the end zone, uh, just kind of wa watch out for him to, to get in the field that way. I mean, we, we know Notre Dame has some really good runners in Jeremiah Love and Jadarian Price. They, they, they have all the trust in the world in, in, in Jabron Payne, as, as Tyler mentioned earlier. I look for Aeneas Williams. Uh, and Keidron Young, he, he's not practicing right now. He's got a little bit of a hammy. But I, I look for Aeneas Williams to, to bring that to the table uh, potentially as early as this fall. And we spent so much of this video talking about Jeremiah Love. That's another reason why Notre Dame is comfortable letting him go out to wide receiver for a little bit. You got Aeneas Williams in here, and when Keedron Young is healthy, he also looks the part of someone who could probably play right away. So, Such a deep room. Dylan McCullough has a wealth of riches at the running back room. I think the wide receivers are improving. This is an offense-heavy video today, but, that, but that's kind of what you want to see in these Notre Dame practices is how that group is coming along. So the next time we'll get the chance to see that, I believe, is next week. These guys are going to take uh, a long weekend for the Easter holiday. If you celebrate, happy Easter to everybody, and we'll, we'll see you guys next week. Tyler Horka, Jack Sobel, uh, Blue and Gold Illustrated.